I've got a my bike uh, 1128 cassette Shimano 105 rear derailleur um, and I recently bought from Samson this 1132 derailleur not for this bike so much as I'm contemplating another build and I was going to use a double on the front instead of a triple but I wanted to maintain the same gear ratio uh, and more of a cross front double so I wanted a wider ratio on the back um, so I got this from Samson which is pretty nice durable uh, it's all stainless the um, the weight you see the weight on there is reported as 321 grams and that is exactly what it weighed when I took it out and weighed it so um, I like Samson. Uh, they have a lot of nice stuff on their site. Uh, I bought some pedals from them too. I need to do a video on those, some commuter pedals. And they're pretty good value, I think, for what I got from them. But anyway, so, you find the question all over the place. Uh, I have a Shimano 105 SS rear derailleur. What's the biggest cog I can shift? Um, so officially, if you read the Shimano documentation, the answer is 28 tooth, which is what I have on here now, and what it's shifting on right now. Um, and there's what the derailleur looks like. The B screw, which is right there. I don't know how well you can see that. The B screw on this is screwed all the way out, uh, just to make a point. So, if you read a Shimano documentation, they'll say, hey, you know, loosen up the B screw to the point where the um, the the jockey is when you're in the biggest cog, you know, it's a few millimeters away. So there's plenty of clearance there, I think. Uh, and also, I think I have enough chain rack to do 32 here. But anyhow, um, what's to lose? I'm going to take this wheel off, put the cassette on, and see if I can shift it. And then everybody, when they ask that question, can refer to this video. Hey, you can at least do 32. Maybe. We'll see. Preliminary answer. Will a short cage 105 derailleur shift up to a 32 cog uh, with a compact crank set? 50 tooth big ring? Preliminary answer is no. Um, so I'm on the next to the last cog right there. And I'm actually shifted up to the the easiest cog, the 32. And at least with the stock chain, you can see the derailleurs maxed out. I wouldn't want to ride it like that. So, we're violating some chain wrap here. Will a longer chain get the job done? Well, maybe. Let me see here. I don't know, I can't tell for sure, but I can make a judgment call. We'll shift it into the into the fast cog and see what it looks like. There's the 11 cog there. Uh, 5039 on the front, I'm on the 39 chain ring right now. And so, you know, I've got some margin here, I think. Uh, what I'm looking for is, you know, is this jockey wheel back so far that I'm getting chain to chain rub or jockey wheel interference and there's to me quite a bit of margin there so you know with the longer chain maybe that's possible uh, but just stock out of the box stuff you're not going to be able to go up to a 32 using the Shimano 105 short cage wish I had the 4700 um, short cage here it's got it's supposed to have a little more flexibility in this respect, so maybe that would work. Um, but anyhow, if I, it's a chain wrap issue, you know. So if I and I'm contemplating going to uh, more of a cycle cross gearing on the chain ring, uh, if I do build this bike, I'm thinking about. So that would be a you know something like a 44, 46 tooth. So. Mm, I think it remains an open question. Am I going to be able to use a short cage or do I have to spend the extra bucks to go with the GS? Uh, the 105 SS is still easy to find. 
in my opinion, at a reasonable price. Uh, the GS is not. People like those GS derailers. Um, and not without good reason. I think it's a great value point. Uh, so, anyhow, stay tuned. We'll see if we can get this to work. So I just wanted to, let's back up here and take a look at this. And I said it was a chain wrap issue and I think I can get it to work with a longer chain. By the way, I've got the 28, 1128 back on here now. <clears throat> so if I think this works with a longer chain, well, how come you don't, A and D, how come you don't just take a few links and put them in there and uh, really answer the question? Well, so the answer is actually what I've, this is my commuter bike, actually what I've got on here is a triple. So the minimum chain ring is a 30. If I make this chain longer, okay, um, it's on the 39 right now. Let's just shift it down and I'll show you actually why I don't want to mess around with making the chain longer. Shift it down here. Okay, now it's shifted down. I'm on the biggest cog in the back. Okay, let's go ahead and shift into the fastest cog in the front. Now, why you would ever ride around like this is unclear, but... Okay, almost there. Okay, now... If you see... Now, I don't have that much clearance between my chain and my jockey wheel, right? So, how many links could I add before I'm rubbing up against here? And that's what I don't want to do with my commuter slash current cyclocross bike. Because usually if I'm in traffic, 80% of the time it's on this, right? So I don't want to mess around with my chain too much just for the sake of finding out if my short cage is going to shift up to a 32. Now, another word of warning. Okay, you'll see, you may see some videos online. Let's shift this back up to a 39. You may see some videos online of people who have a 32 on the back. And they've got maybe a a compact chain ring on the front, right? And it, and they've got it shifted up into a 32, and they're saying, "Oh, look, you know, some mechanic told me what the B screw was, so I messed around with it, and now I can shift all the way up to 32." Which is, you know, it's true in the very limited sense that you need to pay attention to what ring they're on in the front. They're on a compact, they're on the small chain ring in the front. Sure, you can shift up to 32 if you have a GS derailleur, or a, I'm sorry, an SS rear derailleur. Ask them what happens when they shift to the big chain ring, okay? Now, that doesn't necessarily make the assertion wrong. It's, uh, it's what it is is a lie by omission. Um, I already showed you what happens when you shift up to the big chain ring. You run out of chain wrap and your rear derailleur is all stretched out. Now that's okay. A lot of people do that and they just say, well, I know I'm just going to ride on the big chain ring most of the time, <clears throat> never cross chain in that fashion. And if I need the extra gear, I slam it down in the small chain ring and all the way up into the biggest cog, which is fine as long as you're aware that, you know, if you're in the big chain ring, and uh, you try to uh, cross chain it all the way down to the e easiest cog, you're likely to rip your rear, rear derailleur off. So be aware of that. Uh, I actually have my new chain rings in. I got a, um, it's um, 44 is the biggest chain ring. So a cyclo cyclocross uh, chain set. 
and um, I went ahead and got another SS derailleur. So I took the leap of faith that, it, that I'm going to be able to get it to work. Um, so we'll see with a little bit longer chain if that's going to be the case when I get the new frame and I tool it up. Or I may, I may even try and, and put it on here if I have a spare moment and see what happens after I get the new bottom bracket. The new bottom bracket has a different spindle length, so if I want to get my chain line right, i got to get the new bottom bracket if I want to put it on here. So uh, I just wanted to say those two things before I wrap this video up.